Hello there, you beautiful people. Now, strings are present in pretty much every single programming project. And because strings are everywhere, Python has provided us with plenty of inbuilt functions that make doing many common everyday tasks with strings simple and easy to do. So in this lecture, we're going to go over some of these useful functions that allow you to do things like find a word in a certain paragraph, or count the amount of times a certain piece of text appears, or remove certain pieces of text from a string. So by the end of this lecture, you'll have greatly increased the knowledge of the Python string toolkit, and you'll also be able to leverage the power of Python's inbuilt functions for working with strings. And what this means is, you'll be able to spend more time building and creating your projects, and you'll spend less time getting bogged down in the details, and that means more programming fun. So let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is how these special string functions work. Well, they're known as string methods. And, by the way, a method is basically just a function, but it's specific to a certain data type. So string methods are just functions that are specific to strings. And the way that we use a string method is something like this. You have some string, you type a period, then you type the method name and a set of parentheses. So let's break this down. The first thing we need to have is a string, right? So step number one is to type some kind of string here. This could be, I don't know, um, it could be like hello. Okay, so you type your string there. Then you put a period or a full stop, and then the method name or the function name. So, for example, one of the string methods would be count. And then you put some parentheses, and in here you might put uh, some other pieces of data. So in here I might put e. So, for example, this would say, on this string, hello, count the amount of times that E appears. And when we do that, we get back 1. So let me show you another example. Let's say we have a variable called text, and inside here we're going to have the text, happy birthday. Okay? Now, what I can do is I can do text.count. Let's say we want to see the amount of times the letter A appears in text. I could type that and it would tell me two because A appears here and it appears here, which is two times. So you don't need to have the uh, the literal string here. You can actually have a variable which contains that string, which is super useful. And by the way, when you use the count function, it doesn't just have to be one letter. So for example, I could do text dot count, um, let's say day. Okay. And if I do that, it's going to say once because day uh, appears once in happy birthday. So I hope that's super clear. All right, so you've just learned how to count the amount of times a piece of text appears in a certain string. The next thing I want to show you is how you can quickly convert a string into uppercase, lowercase, title case, and capitalize it, which is useful for all sorts of uh, data validation, making sure your text is in the right format. So let's say we have a string called x. Uh, if I go up here, x equals happy birthday but notice that this time the first letter of each word are capital letters okay so if i use the x dot lower method the lower method what we're going to see is what that text would look like in lowercase okay and likewise you may have guessed it if you were thinking that far ahead x dot upper is going to give you that text in uppercase now, one thing I need to point out is that this lower and upper method are not actually modifying the original string. So if I type X again, we can see that it's exactly what we typed at the beginning, even though I just used the upper method here. You can see that the, you know, it's still got lowercase letters in it. And the reason for that is because strings are an immutable data type, which means that they cannot be changed. Immutable means unchangeable. Mutable means changeable. So that while they cannot be changed, they can be overwritten. So X is lowercase to begin with, as you can see, it's still got some lowercase in it and a few capital letters. But if I type X equals X dot upper, and I run that, and then I show you what X is, you can now see that X has been changed um, to be the fully uppercase value. So when we were just running the method on its own, it was just telling us what it would be like if it was uppercase or all lowercase. But when we assigned x the value of itself in uppercase, that's what changed it. You can't change them unless you overwrite them because strings are immutable. 
So let's go ahead and convert x back into lowercase to make our happy birthday message a lot less aggressive. So if I just typed x dot lower, we're going to see it in lowercase, but x won't have changed. But if I type x equals x dot lower, we can now see that x is all lowercase. So another method that I want to introduce you to is the capitalize method. Um, so what this does is it takes any string and turns just the first letter into uppercase. Now, capitalize is spelt with American spelling, so instead of the S, you put a Z, like this. So, X dot capitalize with a Z, and that is going to show us, um, basically, it's going to take just the first letter, which is H, and turn it into an uppercase version of itself. But again, X hasn't actually changed because we didn't overwrite it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bit more space by just typing enter a few times. Okay, so what if we wanted to capitalize the start of every word? Well, for that, we'd need to use the title method. So if I type x.title, you're going to see now that h has been capitalized because it's the start of the first word, and b has been capitalized because it's the start of the second word. But again, remember, because we didn't overwrite it, x hasn't changed until I write x equals x dot title, and now x will have been changed. Now, sometimes when you're working with logic, which we're going to come on to in a later section of the course, you might want to know whether a piece of text is lowercase or is uppercase or is title case, etc. So the way that we can do that is with the, for example, if you wanted to check if x is lowercase, it's not, but look, what you type is x dot is lower. And when it runs out, it's going to tell us false, basically because x isn't lowercase, right? So what if I did x dot is upper? If I said the way, x dot is upper will also tell us false because it's not uppercase. But if I do x dot is title and run that, it's going to tell us true because x is indeed title case because the first letter of each word is capitalized. We can also find if text contains just letters. So for example, x dot is alpha is going to tell us whether everything in x is letters. So if I do that, it's going to say false. And the reason it's going to say false, if I show you uh, x again, is because x actually contains a space and a space isn't a letter. So this just shows you sometimes how you can be expecting one answer, but a computer gives you the other thing because it's just so picky about what it works with, right? So if a space is in the text, x dot is alpha is going to give false. But if I had another piece of text like a, b, c, d, and I did, and I did is alpha uh, on that, that's going to tell me true because there's no spaces and it's all letters. You can also check whether her piece of text contains just numbers using the is digit method. So if I do x dot is digit and run that, it's going to tell us false because obviously x isn't all numbers. But if I had one, two, three, for example, and I did is digit on that, that's going to tell us true because this contains all numbers. You can also check whether a piece of text contains only alphanumeric characters. And by that, I mean the text only contains letters A through Z and numbers 0 through 9. So if I had another uh, piece of text called Y and I said that set that equal to happy birthday 123 and I did Y dot uh, is alnum. So for is alphanumeric, then that will that will tell us true. But if I add any other kind of punctuation, so if, say for example, if I did y equals happy birthday exclamation mark one, two, three, and I did y dot is alnum. So I've only added the exclamation mark and that's gonna now tell me false because the exclamation mark isn't uh, a letter or a number. So as this video is getting a bit long, I'm going to cut it short here um, and we'll continue with a few more methods in the next video. But just as a quick review of what we did, we learned that the way that you use string methods is you have some kind of string, you type a full stop or a period, the method name and a pair of parentheses and sometimes you might put something inside of there. Okay, and the methods that you learned were the, the dot lower, the dot upper, the you learned also the dot title, the dot capitalize, which allows you to put your text in all different types of, um, of forms. Capitalize uh, turns just the first letter capital. Title turns the first letter every word capital. This turns everything capital, and this turns everything lower. 
You also learnt ways to check whether things were lowercase or not and uppercase. So you got dot is is lower, you got dot is upper, you've got dot is title, like that. Um, and you also had a few other things to check whether strings contain certain stuff. So you had dot count uh, to count the amount of times a letter appeared. So dot count a would count the amount of times a appeared. You also had dot is alpha to check whether things only contained letters. You had dot is is a digit to check that things only contained digits. And finally, you had actually let me keep that there. And finally, you had dot is alnum, which checked whether thing whether your string only contained alphanumeric characters, which are letters and numbers. So use this lecture as a reference in the future, or at least just to know what exists. I'm not expecting you to memorize this stuff. We're going to get plenty of practice using it. But there's a few more things that I want to show you when you work with strings uh, before we jump into the project. So we'll go over those in the next lecture. Should be quite a short one because we're nearly there. Um, and then we'll start applying this in practice.